Hello everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to dive deeper into the service worker lifecycle, we are going to cover application versioning. For that we are going to cover the install and activate phases of the service worker lifecycle. This is absolutely essential even for our development experience with the service worker, otherwise we will constantly run into things that don't seem to make much sense if we don't understand why the lifecycle works this way. Let's say for example that we now want to deploy a second version of this service worker. Here inside the service worker.js file we have access to a variable called self. This is a reference to the service worker itself, so from here we have access to all the service worker API. We are going to do that to add here an event listener to our service worker. This API works in a similar way to the browser API that you already know. We can specify here with the first argument of the add event listener function call. We're going to specify the event that we want to listen to. In this case, we want to listen to the install event of the service worker. And the second argument is the callback where we are going to specify what is the behavior that we want to execute in response to the service worker installation. In this case we are going to log to the console that a certain version of the service worker is installed. Another very important lifecycle event that we are going to go deeper into is the activate lifecycle event. After the service worker has been installed, the service worker will eventually become active. We are going to understand exactly the difference between these two steps of the service worker lifecycle, installation and activation. So here is what we are going to do. We are going to deploy this version of the service worker in the browser, then we are going to change it, we are going to create here a new version, version 2, and we are going to see how and when will the new version be activated and the previous version deactivated. Let's have a look at how this works. Let's switch over to the browser, to a larger window. We are going to open here the application tab and we are going to unregister any service workers that we had here running. Another option is to use the clear storage tab. This tab is going to allow us to clear all browser state for a given web application. In only one place we can clear, for example, local and session storage, IndexedDB, WebSQL, all the cookies, the application cache and we will also unregister service workers. We switch here to the service worker tabs and we are not going to have here any service worker active, it's in state deleted. We don't want to check any of these checkboxes for the moment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to refresh the page and we're going to see that the version 1 of the service worker, which is the one that we have just created, is just been installed. We have here the logging statement that the service worker is being installed and we are going to install the service worker and we are going to activate it. Notice how the registration was already completed even before the installation and the activation took place. Let's now check the application tab. As we can see we have here instance 990 of the service worker up and running. If we click here the source of the service worker, we are going to see that we have here version 1 as expected. If we would open multiple tabs, we would still have version 1 installed. Now let's go back to our application. What we are going to do now is we are going to change the service worker script in order to become version 2. For the moment we are not going to change anything else on the rest of the program. This will be considered by the browser as a different version of the service worker because it's not bitwise identical to the version currently running. Whenever the browser is going to load the index page, it's going to then run the registration script. This registration script is then going to load again the same file, serviceworker.js. The browser is then going to do a bitwise comparison between the version of the service worker that it has running and this new version of the service worker. It's going then to detect that there is a new version and it's going to proceed with its installation and activation. It's important not to change the name of the service worker file so that the version detection mechanism works correctly. Let's now switch back to the browser and see how the new version of the service worker is going to be handled. 
As we can see, because we saved the file, the Angular CLI development server already refreshed the page for us. So what we have here on the console is the registration of the new service worker. We are going to see that the new version of the service worker v2 is being installed and that it actually has been installed already. But notice that this new version of the service worker is not active yet. We don't have here the activation console statement. Let's have a look here at the application tab to see the current state of the service worker. So as we can see, we have instance 990 still activated, still running. And we have here a new instance 991 waiting to activate. Let's have a look to see what is the current version of the service worker running right now in the browser. So as we can see, we are still running version one. This is normal and it's the expected browser behavior. The new version of the service worker is going to be downloaded and installed on the background, but it's not going to become active immediately. Let's remember that this new version of the service worker could have triggered the installation of a complete new version of the application. We want that process to take place in the background so that the user experience does not get disrupted. This means that the user is still running the previous version of the service worker and had it cached the whole application, it would be running the previous version of the whole website. So let's see how can we activate version 2. Here is what we're going to do. We are going to start by reloading the page and checking if version one is still running. So as you can see, we still have here version one running. Let's now try something else. Let's open a second tab and see what version of the service worker is running. If we switch over here to the application tab, we're going to see that the exact same version is running on the second tab, which is version one which is actually great because it means that the user will not experience different versions of the application or parts of it, such as for example the service worker, depending on the tab that the user is on. The user will have a consistent application version across tabs. So if we continue to open more tabs, we will still get here version 1. Let's see then what would we have to do to activate version 2. Because the overarching theme of the service worker lifecycle is to ensure consistency by default from the point of view of the user, and that means that the new version of the service worker will only get activated when the user closes all the tabs that were still running the previous version. Let's see what happens when we close the last tab. We're going to check here in the about blank page that we are running instance 990. Let's then go here to this tab, we are going to close it, this is the last tab running version 1. Let's close it and see what happens. So as you can see, immediately version 990 was stopped and now version 991 is now activated and running. And of course, if we click here on the serviceworker.js file, we are going to see that this is version 2 as expected. So now, if we open here a new tab, and we check what is the version of the service worker that is running. As expected, we are going to see here version 2. Let's confirm our understanding of what is going on here in the console. So as we can see, we have executed the new service worker script. The version 2 is active and the registration is completed. Notice that we don't have here the installation step. That's because the installation happened here in the about blank page where we had the complete list of all service workers. We can see why the service worker lifecycle works this way. The goal is to ensure to the user a consistent experience. Many times the application itself, so all the files that make the application, the multiple CSS and JavaScript bundles, they have been cached by the service worker. We are going to see how to do that in a future section. Now, if that is the case, if most of our application is being served by a given version of the service worker, we can see that we only want to activate a new service worker when we want to activate a new version of the application. That is why we want to wait for the user to deactivate all current running instances of the application on his browser before installing the next application and before caching the new files of the next application. 
This is going to depend on the user. Different users, depending on their browsing sessions, will install the new version of the application at different moments in time. Now that we have a good understanding of the lifecycle, let's implement a concrete service worker that gives to this application offline capabilities.